back to this. Dang, I need to move. There's plenty of room up here. So go ahead on. If you need to move, keep up around me. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Hmm. I, I see now. I need to do one more thing for him. See, I believe in setting the atmosphere. Shake your shoulders. I mean, just, just move around. Just, just free yourself. Woo! You know, when maybe you woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Yeah. You know, maybe I'm eating all that. You know, you're sleeping a little bit, you know. You can't get the cramp in your neck, the crick in your neck, as the country folks say. And so that's what we want to know. You got a crick in your neck. Y'all you sit a little crooked for me now. Mm, okay. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to take my coat off. Because <clears throat> this is going to be one of them sermons. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Ah, mm. First of all, let me give honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who first in my life to my wife and two boys and they actually they had a track meet today. A two day track meet. We don't, we don't give them all of it. But unfortunately they divided our events into two days. And, and so yesterday she missed the first part of the track meet with graduation. And so I had to miss the second part of graduation. I told them, you know, run well today. You know, as a mother, and they tend to do worse when their mama run by themselves. <laughs> you know how they do mama to make them anyway. It's going to be all right. No way. You did your best. No, you did. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, that's how we do it. Don't worry about it. Tell the truth. Get them another day. No, we need to do this day. <laughs> so I told them this morning, look, don't give me this phone call afterwards and say, I didn't do my best. <laughs> In the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. We came to have church. Woo, In the book of John. Somebody give God a head cup of praise one more time. The book of John, if you have your Bible, the book of John. If not, so hold on, Mr. Preacher. Oh, All right. The book of John, the fifth chapter. The book of chapter John, the fifth chapter. How you doing today? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> and the book of John, the fifth chapter. I was going to try something new today. My wife been trying to get me to preach using a nook or her, or her iPad. Oh. I'm old school. I, I believe you. <laughs> Gotta have a Bible sitting up here with you. I told you, you don't want me to use your iPad. Much as I move around, you're gonna drop that thing. <laughs> the book of John, the fifth chapter. And for anybody that's going through anything, that's had some trouble in your life, that you that there was a situation that you thought there was no way that God would turn this around. I just need you to know, hold on. My daughter is sitting in the back and we getting to know each other after 19 years of being apart. But one day God just brought her back into my life. So I don't care how bad the situation is. You know, we, we all make mistakes sometimes in some way on this journey that we make. But, the, but God will turn it around for you if you just allow him to turn it around. And so I, I give honor to her for being able to just have a relationship. Amen. And that's what happened. I mean, you know, we got apart and, and, and you know, from birth and, and about a year ago, I mean, God brought it back into my life and I give God honor and glory Amen. for that situation. <laughs> so anything that you got going on, all you got to do is just continue to ask God and God will do it for you in Amen. the name of Jesus. Everybody got the book of John? Yes, sir. Fifth chapter. If not, say, hold on, Mr. Preaching there. But I'm going to prophesize to you. If you turn to the very beginning of the book, <laughs> There's something called the table of contents. Don't be ashamed. Go to the table of contents and find where it says John. Right side on the other side, you have some pages there. Just turn to John. Now we're ready. Everybody stay. Let's stay for the reading of God's word. John, I'll be reading out of the King James Version, so mine may be a little different than yours, but don't worry about it. Verse 1 says, after, I mean, chapter 5, verse 1 says, after, the, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, there it is at Jerusalem by the, the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. And there lay a great multitude of impotent folks, 
blind, halted, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Look at your neighbor and say, it wasn't in the water. <clears throat> Wasn't in the water. Oh, say it like you mean to say it wasn't in the water. Wasn't in the water. In the name of Jesus. And the movement of the water, for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever that first, then first after the trouble of the water stepped in and was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. That's a long time. And when Jesus saw him not, and knew that he had been and had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at your neighbor and say, That was a crazy question. That was a crazy question. <laughs> the infinite man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step is down before me. Mm, look at your neighbor again and said, I already told you it wasn't in the water. It wasn't in the water. Jesus was said to him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately <clears throat> the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Mm, I, I want to go back to verse 8. Jesus said to him, Rise. Take up thy bed and walk. Mm, I, I want to talk a little while today from the topic of it's your turn. Mm. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, it's your turn. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we come right now, God, first of all, asking you, God, set an atmosphere in here, God, for preaching, God. Then I ask you, God, to give me the spirit of boldness to say what it is you would have me to say. And then, God, we ask your people's hearts to be open so that they may be able to receive what it is you would have me to say. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. <clears throat> As we get started, say, it's your turn. It's your turn. <laughs> And as we get started, we, we, we want to think about, when, when you think about when it says, it's your turn, I, I, I think about growing up and we used to play kickball. And, and you know, you had some folks that could kick that ball. <laughs> and as they would go out, you know, they always thought that they should kick every time. <laughs> and, but you know, the game rule says that everybody should get a chance to kick the ball. And, and you know, but certain times, you know, when the bases were loaded, you didn't want your turn because you knew you was going to get out. And so you didn't want your turn. But, but, but soon you still had to go take your turn. And that's what we want to talk about today. We I want to talk about it's your turn. Yeah. I, but I don't want to just leave it there. I want you to think about how many times, how long you've waited for something to come your way. I want you to think how long it's been since I really can say I've had my turn at something. I really want you to think about how long it's been since I can say it's my turn. And I want you to think about it from a spiritual standpoint. What does it mean when it's your turn spiritually? It means things that other folks are struggling with. You don't have to worry about it. It means that when it's your turn spiritually that God shows you favor. And see, I need somebody to know there is a difference between favor and blessings of the Lord. And what is the difference between having favor of God and a blessing from God? I'm glad you asked. The difference between having favor from God and a blessing from God, a blessing is a one-time curse. You get your blessing and you go ahead on about your business. God may bless you with this, but you have to understand that favor is something that lasts a long time. When you have the favor of God on your life, that means it's your turn. And stuff that you know you're not qualified for somehow seems to come your way. Stuff that you know you, have, you don't have the education for the job, but because you have the favor of God on your side, when it's your turn, stuff just works out for you. I don't know about you, but I know it was some more qualified folks than I was. It was some folks that I know should have got the job. But because I had favor on my side, I realized that it was my turn. You know, the Bible, there's a quote in there that says there's a season for everything. When it's your turn, it's your season. And I don't know about you, but I had some bad seasons too. I had some seasons when it wasn't my turn. And I had to sit back and wait. But I need you to know, when it's your turn, it don't really matter. You have to be prepared for your season. You have to be prepared when it's your turn. Look at your neighbor and say, favor ain't 
ain't fair. Favor ain't, ain't fair. fair. Oh, what do you mean favor ain't fair? Because as you said, I, I know, you know, there's some stuff that I have no business. I have no business in the house that I'm in, but I had favor. I have no business driving what I drive, but I had favor. I have no business having the relationship with folks that I have, but I had favor. It was not nothing that I did. It was just my turn. The it was just my turn in the name of Jesus. I need you to get excited when it's your turn. See, because guess what? You gotta understand. God works just like everything else. He works just like seasons. When it's not your season. No, 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 let me go back. When it is your season and you're not excited about your season, you will mess around and miss your season. And if you miss your season because you didn't realize it was your turn, Right now it's the Miami Heat season. Ah, oh, they won last night. They pulled it out because it's their turn. In the name of Jesus. Ah, but we get excited for the wrong reasons. And you got to understand when it's your turn. God doesn't always do stuff. We get in trouble when it's our turn. See, because somewhere on this religious walk, folks have told us that all I got to do is ask God and he'll do it for me. That is true. But what they fail to tell you is when it's your turn, sometimes God does stuff in a different way. Sometimes he does stuff unexpected. Sometimes it don't always go point A to point B to point C. Have you ever realized that God can change the process anytime he wants? Somebody don't know what I'm trying to tell you. You're expecting it to come this way. But God moved over here in this way. You have to understand that, that when it's your turn, when you in school, you know, you, you we all go through seasons where it's not your turn. Well, you, it's your turn, young folks, to be the one that they pick up. It's your turn for them to go through stuff that you have to say. I, I ain't quite feeling this yet. I don't think the teacher liked me. If you have those seasons, but it's your turn. When it's your turn, it's your turn. Mm. But, but, but you know how I like to do things. Let me go and tell you now. Put your hands up. So I'm going to buckle up because I'm going to hurt you before I help you. And as we get ready to go forth, when it's your turn, there's some things that I need you to know. There's some things that I need you to understand about when it's your turn. Ah, let's go back to, to the book of John as we were. Let me explain my story because I don't want anybody to say I went to church, he read some scripture, and he didn't tell me the story. So let me tell you what's going on here. Here we have the man that I like to call uh, the average American. Uh, what do you mean the average American? Here we have a man who goes down, understand the background. What happens to beggars at this time? Back in the day, back then, the only way that disabled folks could make a living was begging. And so they would bring them down, and this was a religious fist that was going on. And so church folks had a duty. I like to call them church folks because, you know, we feel like sometimes we have an obligation. You know how sometimes you see the man sit beside the road? Now you don't have him all the time. But every now and then you feel obligated to give him a dollar or two. And when he's back in my mind, I'm saying, it's Jordan, it's Jordan, it's Jordan. You know, he gets over on me. But, but, but you feel obligated every now and then to give him something. Hmm. And so here we have a, a man that had been lame, could not walk, paralyzed, basically, for 38 years. And, and you may be saying to yourself, I, I would never have something wrong with me for 38 years. Well, you know, if you've been doing the same thing over and over, it may not have been 38 years. But guess what? 10 years, just as long as 38 years, when you start doing the same thing over and over. And so he said, his was 38 years. And so from the 
marriage standpoint, I need you to think about 38 years. Young folks, it takes you 18 years to pretty much supposed to be grown, to be able to leave your mama house from the time of birth to the time you graduate is 18 years. And so up on that point, you are the mom and daddy rule. But when you turn 18, if I want to get out, and trust me, mom and daddy want you to get out too. So it's not like that we're not rushing you either. And so when you turn 18, you can technically leave at any time you want to. You can go to college, where I hope most of you are going to do it. You can go to work. You can go in the military. You can do a lot of different things. But here we have a man that has been a lame for 38 years. And he has this speech. And But we're talking about it's your turn. So that's the background. So he had been going year after year trying to get in the war. And but every time he got there, there was a whole lot of folks that was there. Some of them just had withered hands, so that means they could when the, when they felt like the water was troubled, they could just jump on in. And so the Bible says that the first one in, and so it was a lot of folks that left the same way they came. And so in other words, that's what happened here. And so he did not get a chance to jump in the water quickly because he couldn't get down and get in the water. Well, the water been smart. And, 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 and like me and you, what he should have did was count out a few days. He knew when the feast was. He should have counted out. And, and you know, he had to have no legs. He could have got right at the edge of the pool and timed it. As soon as he thought the water was going to be trouble, dump on it. And he would have been made whole. And, but that's what, that's a different story? A different sermon. I'm talking about it's your turn. And so that's the background. That's what happened to this man. And now, so here we go. I need you to know if it's your turn, it's some things that you have to do. Look at your neighbor and say, it's some work you have to do too. Some work you have to do. Oh, say it like you mean it. Say, it's some work you have to do. It's some work you have to do. Right. And, and so guess what? So let me get started with this thing as we get ready. The first thing that you have to do is if it's your turn. Now the thing I need you to do is remember a turn. A turn means this, that you can be here and then God can turn it around. That's a turn. And so watch this. The first thing that you have to do, if you're going to be, if it's your turn, you have to be in position to receive what's already yours. Okay. Mm. Uh, what do you mean it's already mine? You know like I know. The Bible tells us that we are predestined. What God, what God has, I was saying, what God has for me, it is, it is for me. You've heard that people say that before. And so if God already has it for you, then you just have to be in position to receive what you're asking for. Okay. What I need you to understand, when it's your turn, and the thing with this man, it's not how long it's so long. It's not how long that you've been in the situation. Because you know just like I know, if you're in trouble, I don't care how long I've been going through it. As so long as I come out of it. I don't care how long I've been broke. I don't care. As long as the situation turns around for me, it doesn't matter how long. See, because the minute that it turns from how long to so long, I'm out of my situation. And so it doesn't really matter. But you have to remember, it's not how long, it's so long. And God shows up in time to get you out of it. And so if, if it's already yours, you predestinate it. The Bible says in Romans that you predestinated, that he predestinated you. But the Bible also lets us know that he knows what you need even before you ask. Go ahead. Hmm. Has anybody thought that God had forgot about you? That he didn't know what you wanted? He didn't know what you needed? But the Bible clearly lets us know that he knows what you need even before you ask. But here's the thing that I need you to know about this story. If you look at this thing closely, it, when it's your turn, it's your turn. Ah, because he did not even ask God. Mm. Look at the Bible. Read this chapter. Read verse 1. It says that Jesus came to the feast and Jesus walked up to him and said, would you be made whole? The man was just sitting there. It did not say that he called out, Jesus, I need you to heal me. So when it's your turn, 
It has absolutely nothing to do with you. But when it's your turn, it's your turn. Amen. And he didn't even ask Jesus to heal him. But it was just his turn. And that's what I need you to know. You have to, but you have to be in position Amen. to receive what you're asking for. What am I trying to tell you? Don't get discouraged because you had to wait longer than you thought you should have waited. I said, don't get, let me say that again. Don't get discouraged because the wait seems longer than what you thought you should have waited for. The Bible lets us know that his time is not our time. So in other words, Jesus going to do it when he wants to do it. That's what you have to remember. Right. It's not about you. I keep trying to tell folks, but the last month and a half, he has had me on this rampage telling folks, it's not about you. Right. And so you may think that I've done enough to come out of what I'm in. I've prayed enough to come out of this, but you have to be in position to receive what's already yours. Right. Can you imagine after 38 years what happens? Because I, I don't know about you, but some point, you get to the point where you say, this is the way it's going to be. I can't change nothing. I don't know how many times I've said, well, I just can't change the situation. And you just go about trying to do stuff different. Can you imagine if after 37 years, on the 38th year, he decided that I was going to stay home? Mm. And that's what I'm trying to get you to see. It's not how long. You have to understand. It's not about you. And so just because you think you've been in it long enough, and I know I'll say it sometimes myself, look, it's time for me to come.